When it comes to implementing authorization inside of your system, there's different places that you could actually go and implement it. The most core grain authorization is simply checking, is this person authenticated? Yes or no. If they are, then they should have access to your APIs, etc. And if they're not, then all access should be denied and you force them to go and go and authenticate. And actually like your most coarse grain level of authorization. And you could do that at the API gateway layer, for example. The next level down is when you want to do authorization based on some context that's available in the request. So this is where you can implement RBAC or role-based access control. Here, you may want to only allow certain API routes inside of your application to be accessible if you have a certain role, for example, in your JWT token that your identity provider has issued. So user A has an attribute in their token that says they're an admin. Thus, you should decide or allow them to access, say, the admin endpoints inside of your application code, whilst user B is only has the user role, thus they should only access some other routes inside of your system. And again, this is something you could implement at the gateway level or service mesh level if you're using something like Istio or Linkerd. Um, but when it comes to the more fine-grained ABAC or attribute-based access control, this is where the authorization needs to be moved down into the actual application layer itself. So typically in the request, user comes in, the request goes through your load balancer, it goes through your API gateway, it hits the particular service that's going to handle that request. Within that service, you'll have an, a request handler. Yeah, if it was a typical like REST API, for example, inside of that request handler, you unpack that request. You already know who the user is because further up the chain, you've evaluated their authentication credentials. You've got information from your identity provider around what roles they have, what teams they belong to. You also know based on that request, what resource they're trying to access. So now inside of the request handler, this is where you do go and implement the attribute based access control because you have the full context of the user and the resource that they're trying to access. And thus you can now go and check the particular attributes about either of those, the user or, or the resource to make an uh, authorization decision upon, be it inside the application code or by sending that request onto an authorizing service like Servos.